I spent the last two years of my ownership with this Porsche 996 Turbo, rebuilding it, fixing it up, and making sure that it's a good daily driver, and added a couple of modifications on the way as well. But now it's time to see what Porsche thinks of it. When I picked this thing up in 2022, it really was the definition of a hunk of shit. It was dirty, it was disgusting, it had terrible paint, it was smoked in, it had oil leaks, it had horrible body damage, horrible body parts, and it just generally needed a ton of work. But after my couple years of ownership, I think it's safe to say that this thing came out really, really nice. I am super pleased with the interior, the exterior, how it runs and drives. Literally everything about this car is what I dreamed it would be. But now it's time to see what Porsche thinks because, well, they're the experts and I'm just some dude in a garage making YouTube videos. But before I can drop it off at the Porsche dealership, there's actually a good bit wrong with it that I need to fix first because obviously they're gonna find it, which means it needs fixed anyway. Cool to have both these cars, I'm not gonna lie, but that one's gotta go. Time to get back to work on the daily. She needs a lot of love. I need to fix everything that I already know is wrong with it. And that list seems to keep growing. Hopefully Big Bertha doesn't let me down here. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Yeah, maybe the battery needs a little, a little juice. I am glad to be getting rid of this cheap freaking crap that was on the car when I bought it. It looked like doo-doo. Now, if you're wondering why I'm removing the front bumper, it's actually for two different reasons. Now, it's pretty obvious, at least to me, a couple things. Number one, you see what's missing up here? If you guys remember, this thing never had a front bumper beam. Don't know why. My assumption is because the old crappy bumper that was on it wouldn't fit with it on. So I have an actual bumper beam to go on because that is a major safety concern. And number two, you can see why the marker light yeeted itself because, uh, well, the piece that holds the marker light in is completely broken. And I think I remember seeing this with JB Weld on it that wasn't from me. There we go, now the car's safe again. Yeah, this is certainly much more complete than that old one that's uh, pretty much gone. Oh, that piece is broken. This whole freaking thing's broken. Yes, that's much better. I suppose we'll try this again with a charged battery. This does have me worried though, I'm not gonna lie. That's not good at all. Well, how about the other side? Ah, oh, sh**. Not good, not good at all. 1,200 foot-pounds too. 
didn't budge. Now, I may be the first to tell you, I don't believe in rust release penetrant or any of that nonsense. But, I mean, what, what I got to lose at this point? I'll do both of these and let it sit overnight and then hit it with some heat tomorrow. In the meantime, I can get some other stuff removed. The reason I'm taking all this apart is because I need to replace both front axles and add axle spacers. As you'll see a little later, my CV joints pulled themselves apart on both sides. I'm just going to let it sit there for a bit. We're following some breaking news this morning. It's a fire that started in a garage and spread to several other buildings. It's nice. That's all I needed. Wonderful. Nice. Two excellent condition used axles and now to prevent this problem from happening again some axle spacers sit right there very nicely all new bolts let's do it Here's a little comparison before I get the axle out. You can see how rough of a shape they were in. They were making a nasty clicking noise when turning, so they definitely needed to be repaired. Porsche would have found this immediately. And the fix for them is spacing them out. And that's because the car is lowered. I have different control arms. I have added camber. This should solve all those problems. Oh man, this thing is toast. So you can see what happened here. And this was already messed up before I pulled it out. I could see this before I started working on the car and it's the same on both sides. So it's like the CV joints were pulling apart and you can hear, you can hear that noise. And it was making that noise when I was turning. I did not fix the rubbing when turning. I previously thought that clicking noise was my wheels rubbing the fender liners, but you smart cats pointed out that it was not that, it was the CV joints. So thanks for the info. You guys are a lot smarter than I am. Yeah, it's rubbing both sides, just like it was before. So I gotta do something else about the caster on this thing. No bueno. So I need to put on the spacers with the new bolts. nice nice new hardware nice spacer nice very gently used axle cool it's looking good that wasn't as bad as i thought so i gotta put all this crap back together though all right this side's all done oh no never mind i gotta get the axle nut obviously go ahead and torque this thing to spec Good to me. Oh man, this one pulled apart on the inside and the outside. Absolutely, completely shot. I mean, it also has 151,000 miles, so there's, there's that as well. Getting the first one is the hardest. The rest come decently easily. Job done, or at least that job. Since I installed the bumper beam and the new bumper light bracket, it's time to put the actual bumper back on for the final time. There we go. Thank you. 
with everything else on the front end done, let's install some bumper lights that are, well, just a tad better than the eBay specials that were on there. And for the finishing touch, beautiful parts from Renline, because Renline is the best ever. The to-do list isn't quite completed yet, and I'm gonna do this next task with the help of Giraffe Tools. I have used this thing all the time, and I absolutely love it. This is their Prone Bottle, and I've had absolutely zero issues with it. It's powerful, it's quiet, it has a built-in reel. It's best feature. Now, I've been using their pressure washers for years, and I absolutely love them. The biggest reason I love them is because they work really well, but it's because you don't have to worry about cords and reels and all that because it's all just built in and then you can just clean your car. Like with this bird crap right there. Gone. They're super easy to mount on the wall and you can pull them right off. To Every year I take the pressure washer off the wall from its quick mount and pressure wash the whole outside of my house. And the giraffe pressure washer is just the absolute perfect tool to do that. All the link in the description box you guys pick this up and their wall-mounted real vacuum cleaner as well. And use discount code MATT to save yourself some money. Now the Pro model has a 100-foot auto-retractable hose, and the automatic retractor can stop and start at any point in that 100 feet. This unit also has great pressure, and it comes with four different nozzles, 0 degrees, 15 degrees, 25 degrees, and 40 degrees. All in all, this is my absolute favorite tool to use when cleaning any of my vehicles. Not bad for a quick clean, but now it's, I think, ready to see Porsche. Oh, one more thing. Sheesh. The car looks so good cleaned up, and it looks so much better with the Renline bumper lights as compared to the eBay ones that were on there before. But before I can take it to Porsche, I do need to drive it and make sure I fix that CV joint clicking noise. You can beat the sound of 996 turbo. It just sounds incredible. And a tight turn test, say that six times fast, revealed that, well, the clicking noise is gone. Sufficient? Yes. In prep for a future video, Donald and I both drove the 996 and 7 back to back. But after I got it back to the house, I forgot there was one more thing I had to do that was a boost leak test. I did find a minor one that I fixed. And then I also wanted to raise the front of the car a little bit because the tires were rubbing on the fender liners just a little bit. I didn't get to fully detail the outside before I'm dropping it off the dealership, but at least it's washed, so I need to quickly clean the inside too. But I've got to take it to the dealership tonight because they're going to do the PPI tomorrow. I've, I've got a lot to do. Now you professional detailers out there, don't critique me too much. This was like a 10 minute job. I wanted to vacuum it and get the dust off the thing before taking it to Porsche. It's not an in-depth detail, that's for sure, but it looks a lot better than what it did, considering I've been driving this thing for like six months without cleaning it.
So I got the phone call that the car was done, I went to pick it up, and it came with some surprising results. Just, just picked the car up and I've got the whole list of everything wrong with it from Porsche, so let me go over it. It's not all bad news. Ooh, look at that thing, boys. I love it. Now, if you don't know what a multi-point inspection is, it's basically a Porsche service tech looking over your entire you car. Know. Part of the process also includes checking fluids, levels, and conditions to make sure that the vehicle is up to Porsche standard. When we go to the this guy does a really vehicle, good job at explaining it, but he's taking way too long. Works. Top to bottom, side to side, we're talking electronics, interior, AC, heat, wheels, tires, brakes, suspension, leaks, absolutely everything on the car. They are looking to see if that car needs absolutely anything, not only because you're paying for the service, but because if they find something wrong, that means they can offer to fix it for you for a Porsche price which is certainly not cheap in labor or parts. So to say I was nervous dropping this off was an understatement, especially because it's a 23 year old car with 151,000 miles that I rebuilt myself and it was clapped out when I got it. So I was expecting the worst, but hoping for the best. Well boys, here's the damage report. Let's go over it. So if we look here, this is the complete multi-point inspection. It's pretty detailed. Brakes are good, tires are good. Obviously that stuff has been replaced. Now they noted that the key fob doesn't work. I've known that since I've got the car and it only has one key, unfortunately. They said the GT2 body kit installed on the vehicle is contacting the front lid at the front edge. It's an aftermarket bumper, it's not gonna fit that well. Aftermarket wiring inside the front bumper appears to be a radar detector or HID headlamp module. Yeah, I was wondering that myself when I was putting the actual bumper V in there, what that was for. I guess that makes sense, but I never messed with any of that wiring. It was there when I bought the car. Aftermarket short shifter, aftermarket head unit amp. This is a good one. Brake fluid is blue, which is either an indication that it hasn't been changed in a long time or that high performance brake fluid is installed. We'll go with the latter option there. Scan vehicle for faults. None were found outside of a few for low battery voltage. Awesome. Steering wheel slightly offset to the right when the vehicle was driving straight on a flat road. Haven't had that issue. No strange noises. No issues could be detected. No excessive leaks found. Slight dampness on the front differential and transmission. That could also be from when I changed the fluid. Aftermarket exhaust installed without cats, so it must be tuned. Uh-huh, you think? GT3 style lower control arms, full run line suspension arms, KWV3 coilovers, no leaks found, air conditioning works as designed. However, the heat does not reach the high temperature that it should reach. No other issues found with the vehicle. I think the heat works fine. So, I mean, it, it does work fine. I guess it, according to them, it could be hotter. I don't know, but that that's everything. And I'm super, super pleased and super pumped with that, guys. I thought for sure they would find something because I'm not an actual mechanic. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing a lot of times. And it's an old car with 151,000 miles. I thought for sure there'd be something wrong. But essentially there isn't. 